it's time for questions and um, the f- I, I think the f- there are a couple of questions that have already been written the first one of course uh, I think it goes out to yeah I think it goes to Jim and uh, the question over here is how do you identify the trainers and what is the medium of instruction this is from Arun right Jim you need to unmute yourself Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's such a new world the way we exist now. Yeah. Um, so it's a good question. Um, and in terms of identifying the participants and who we work with, um, this is something because I'm in Myanmar. I've been here a long time, but I'm an outsider. So I rely heavily on local partners. Um, we we cannot do anything without local partners so as we essentially our main focus is our teacher training and so um, we work with local groups from all over the country that identify the teachers to help bring them to us they go through 10 week training that i help with and then we identify specific teachers with local partners to address further and deeper training um, and this, yes, please, Charles. The second part of the question, yeah, was about the the medium that we use for teaching. Yeah, yeah, it's all hands on. So in our ten week teacher training, um, they work with lots of different facilitators that do lots of different activities and lots of different materials. With us at Sprouting Seeds, um, our training center here, and at Whispering Earth, it's all hands-on and full immersion. So we're we're much believers mm-hmm. in head, heart, and hands, um, and getting your whole body engaged and involved um, with every activity that we do. So it's very practical, and the, the teachers, or we could say students, are jumping right into the activities. Thank you so much. I, Arun, are you satisfied with that? or? Do you need some and more time? I, I was just wondering, uh, yes. what are your resources? How do you finance your program? Uh, Arun, thank you. It's very difficult, especially now with, <laughs> with the, the health situation and this um, political situation. Um, so we, we are registered as a non-profit organization, an NGO in the US. So this helps a bit. But, but we're very small, so, so it's not much funding that comes in. And then part of what we're trying to do, Arun, is um, through this training center, the Sprouting Seeds, it's actually a cafe and a bakery and a shop. So as the, the girls are doing their training, um, it's a social enterprise and all the money is coming back in and supporting all of the activities. And through our natural building and our organic farming, it's all very expensive, uh, very inexpensive, um, especially the building parts. It's all local materials. So that cuts our cost tremendously. So it's a variety of ways that we do it. But a big part of it is trying to generate the income from within our projects. But no support from the government in Myanmar, sorry to say. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. Uh, the second question is, uh, um, the next question is from Arun itself, and that is to Ram. And uh, uh, the question over here is, do you run some consultancy to address specific individual needs? So, um, well, I am a, I am an accredited coach. Uh, however, uh, I have not been spending too much of time on one-on-one coaching because uh, I find it a lot more productive in my time actually to be able to address larger number of people together. So I've done mostly uh, one one to many, um, ranging from 20 to 1000 people addressing in one shot. Uh, schools, I would be very happy to help in uh, creating this change which I talked about because we know today that it is actually social and emotional uh, maturity and abilities uh, which really contribute to success in life. Whether you're an IITN or an MBA from the greatest institute in the country or a great scientist or a great doctor uh, or a great teacher, whatever it is, unless you have that ability to connect, understand emotions and connect through emotions with your uh, the people around you, 
you will not succeed in life and to make that change happen in the school's focus i would be very happy to uh, reach out to schools and help them thank you i think arun you are satisfied with that thank you yeah, thank thanks you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, my question to to you uh, is basically, you've written about this active parenting. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think are the greatest mind blocks of a parent while training a successful kid? I think there are a couple of issues which usually land up. Uh, number one is that parents believe that the way they were brought up should guide the way they bring up their children. they forget that the children are individuals on their own right and they are completely different every single child is completely different right um their genetic their predisposition their um uh, their society that they are living in all are different and you cannot use the same parameters which were used when you were brought up to bring up your child parents have to learn what's happening and be flexible to understand and then accordingly move number 2 what i find is the second biggest issue is that parents are mostly on a fire fighting mode uh, mm. and uh, so so for example they they if the child is throwing a tantrum they address the tantrum or if the child has an exam they address that exam if they if the child has got a a, a, a sports uh, thing they address that so they are constantly moving from one fire fighting to the other fire fighting what they don't for, uh, what they forget to do in this entire thing is to actually build the right qualities in the children proactively instead of reactively and that proactive ab- ability to build the right traits and qualities in children is what i have given in active parenting Uh, to know what those traits and qualities are and that is across the board and irrespective of whether the child is from a poor family rich family uh, uh, the child is uh, 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 of whatever gender or any of these some of these aspects are equally critical and parents need to focus on building these qualities proactively that's really true wonderful actually uh, mm- sometimes we do feel that parents lack the motivation to give their children the right you know tools they feel that exactly what they have done they uh, that's how life should work on great so thank you so much if there is someone else with a question you can always shoot it out i'll uh, get back to uh, jim for a question and then i'll come back to you sir so uh, jim i'd like to know one thing is um, there are so many uh, problems that you all are facing over there right and then you are working with two communities the christian community as as well as the buddhist right does the mindset ever affect the growth of your project the mindset of the communities that we work with yes yeah you know it's interesting with all the turmoil and challenges that we face here in myanmar um we we do some work with what we call interfaith dialogue um and so um it's it's this isn't something that seems to be a stumbling block or a challenge um it's amazing i mean the town that we live in is so diverse with um r- religions ethnicity um with languages um and people in myanmar although there are these um you know decades of challenges and struggles typically on a day to day basis um that doesn't block the view so much it doesn't block the way um and we live in a very small town um but we we have a hindu temple we have a sikh temple we have a mosque we have several different churches we have several different temples um and all of these people have lived together harmoniously with with no issues so we actually draw on that um aspect of of people and 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 try to use that in the trainings that we work with and it's a bit ironic because also you see the struggles that people face here in Myanmar and what's happening so it's a it's a double sided situation but from our experience um it hasn't been so much of a hindrance great that was nice thank you so much great <clears throat> Uh, I'll get back to Ram and uh, I think we'll have this will be the last question of the 
uh, right now if there's someone else you can please type it down or you can ask but um, i think uh, ram you've always had this question coming to you what is the role of finances and happiness <laughs> okay so so the very interesting point of view i want to tell you you need to go to the basic yeah, i'm going to the basic <laughs> so so there was a survey on happiness which is done on a set of people who i mean this was done in the us so the americans who had visited paris as tourists a month back and how happy they were and the same survey was uh, given out to a set of people who were amputees and who had lost a limb a month back uh, and to measure how happy they were the average happiness was the same across both the population so happiness is really a state of mind uh of course uh having a you know bare necessities of life being met through money is very important but beyond that it really doesn't matter uh, i see friends of mine uh, who are very well off some of them are not so happy some of them are very happy i see people who are who are working in many other sectors who are uh, financially far less well off uh, compared to my friends and many of them are way happier so it's just a it's just a matter of uh, it's just a matter of making the best of what you have and making every moment count actually that's so nice thank you so much and with that we'll uh, call it a day i'm very grateful to both our speakers of the day uh, jim and uh, ram ji for engaging us in such a wonderful way and making us think you know because i think that was something that made us uh, think and unlearn a lot of uh, the learning that we've done so this was a wonderful session thank you both of you i'd also like to thank all our audiences today for being with us and uh, encouraging us as well as sharing your views with us thank you and have a nice day today is the last day of the session i hope you've enjoyed yourself we will have a few more sessions so continue to be with us and thank you once again to both our speakers and everyone thank you and god bless good night good night thank you thank you thank you yeah so we end today and thank you so much it was wonderful great bye everyone and good night